Welcome back. It's been another dismal weather week for spring sports around the Dakotas, but thankfully at least one area sporting event was not called off yesterday thanks to the friendly confines of the Sanford Jackrabbit Athletic Complex. For more on that, here's Alex Heinert. Thanks, Kelly. Well, where would we be without indoor athletic facilities, right? Every other early season meet might be on hold for now, but the unseasonably low temperatures did not stop the Scott Underwood invite from going off without a hitch yesterday in Brookings. A good field of 20-plus A and B schools made the trip, and the competition was strong throughout, starting in the sprints. Great battle between two top three 100-meter state placers from a year ago with Chester Area's Riley Greenoff getting the better of Sioux Falls Christian's Parker Nelson by eight one-hundredths of a seconds. Greenoff's also the defending state B 200 meter champ. He would win that race later in the day to complete the sprint sweep. Speaking of doubles, Chamberlain's Ella Byers would also pick up two wins on the day. The former state cross country champ would take the 800 and the mile on Monday. She's one of a handful of really talented distance kids in Class A this year. They're all back in the fold. Midco SN favorites Ipswich made the trip south for this meet, and the Tigers would get a win from senior pole vaulter Wyatt Hawks. Wyatt finished seventh at the State Bees a year ago with an 11-9 clearance, but he would go over 12 feet 6 inches yesterday for the title. That's a big time PR for this early in the season. Elsewhere in the field, all eyes were on the boys' shot put, where three-time Iowa State throws champ Nick Phelps was doing work. The Kingsley Pearson Woodbury Central senior would launch this throw. Ready? 66 feet and one quarter of an inch. That's a new PR for one of the top throwers in the Hawkeye State's prep history. They've been a lot more consistent than last year. Um, last year, I was, my average was like 62, and this year my average is like 64, 65. Yeah, I'm much more consistent though. Yeah, I'm not really going for a specific number. I just want to prove to people that a guy like me that isn't the biggest can be the best. Phelps was the meet's individual star, but the Sioux Falls Christian boys team won the day. The reigning Class A state champs picked up a number of relay and individual victories, including a win in the mile from Lance Van Zee, an impressive 51.1 second 400 from Mitchell Ostra to go along with a second place finish from Cooper hit in that race, and two meet records in the hurdles from state champ Justice Adams in the 110s and the 300s. I think we can expect big things from the Chargers again this season. Our goal has always been that we want to maximize the gifts that God has given us. And, uh, you know, it sounds kind of cheesy just to do your best, but honestly, we feel like uh, we have a group of kids who have a lot of God-given talent. They got a great work ethic, and if they're willing to maximize that, we think the results will take care of themselves. SFC's dominance is fun, but the best story for Monday's meet was the return of Ipswich pole vaulter Taylor Maurer. The 2016 State Beat champ suffered a life-threatening head injury in practice prior to last year's state meet, but incredibly she has made a full recovery and is back vaulting again at a high level, even winning an indoor meet in Aberdeen last week. Taylor would clear 8-4 to finish fourth in the meet on Monday. Here's her coach, Todd Thorson. She's doing great. Um, she played hockey. Um, her team won the state championship. She's doing really good right now. We're actually just doing drills. Um, she almost cleared nine feet with a three-step approach. Um, so we're pretty happy with where she's at there. She's looking strong as ever. And uh, again, now we just got to, you know, continue to get stronger and go from there. I mean, she's just an extremely gifted af athlete, and a, even a better person. So um, it's pretty remarkable that she's still loving track and doing what she's doing. Well, it's great to see her back on the runway for sure. Our Midco Mag crew will have more on Taylor and her story in the weeks ahead. Kelly, back to you. All right, thank you so much, Alex. And just like with all the softball and baseball teams, we are hoping the weather gets a lot warmer for the exciting track season here in the Dakotas as well. When we come back, three Summit League players earn a pretty big honor at the mid-major level, and we'll take a look at our upcoming broadcast schedule for the weekend. Stay tuned. <laughs> 